First D6 coach Fred Roethlisberger and his exceptionally talented daughter, Marie. Another family, another daughter, another Olympic hopeful, Amy Koopman. Both Amy and Marie belong to a unique American gymnastics club. Guest correspondent and gymnast Bart Connor went to Chicago's Mid-America Twisters to investigate. Amy Koopman and Marie Rethlisberger are both among America's top ten female gymnasts. They're the same age, they have the same coach, and they share the same dreams of Olympic glory. The similarities, however, end there. I found the atmosphere inside unusually subdued, despite the presence of several teenage girls stretching. It's the coach who sets the mood, and innovative Bill Sands is all business. The gym was set up to be a very high-powered, no-nonsense training center to uh, put gymnasts. I really believe that function of this gym is to put gymnasts on the national team. Speaking of your gymnasts, you do have some incredibly talented girls here. Uh, Amy Koopman in particular, what kind of girl is she to work with? Oh, she's a pleasure. She's a, she's very articulate, very intelligent, um, very hard-working child. And uh, Lynn Lederer? Yeah, Lynn is, Lynn is the giggling one that we have in the gym. She's the one that's always, uh, oh, probably the most emotional of all the girls oh, that we had. You mean the most out to lunch, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. How about Marie Roethlisberger? She's also had an interesting past with her father and grandfather being in gymnastics. Uh -huh. How is she to work with? She, Marie's probably one of the most stubborn athletes I've ever coached. <laughs> She's so easily angered at herself. She's so stubborn that she, and driven that if she makes an error, instead of making a mechanical correction, she makes an emotional correction for a mechanical problem where she gets angry at herself and then you have to get through the anger to get down to the problem of the skill, so. It's a competitive environment and also a lonely one for a 16-year-old living 400 miles from home and the father she gets to see so seldom. What do you think? Are you pretty proud of her? Oh, it's exciting. Uh Bart, to see her in it like this and mm -hmm. there's been those occasions like the final trials last year where I was coaching two two men in the meet and then uh, when the men weren't competing you know I had my daughter in the final trials sure. competing and uh, I was pretty excited much more excited and nervous than I wanted to be really <laughs> I imagine it's difficult to be a parent and a coach but do you find yourself uh, tempted to coach her I was very tempted yeah. um, you know, I know that I can't do the job because I'm coaching the men and uh, it takes so much time to begin with. I could never do the job, but it's nice to have her come home and come in our gym, show up my men in the uh, gym a lot right. of times. As you know, she's strong enough to do that. Yeah, uh, sure. And I keep our relationship on just a fun level, so when she comes, we play. How about here now? She's training with Bill Sands. Does she enjoy this atmosphere here? I mean, I know it's 400 yeah. miles away from home. Well, um... It's very mixed, you know. Mm -hmm. I, it makes for some awful lonely Sundays uh, yeah. because I've had uh, Marie there raising her and she's kind of taking care of me too as much as I've <laughs> taken care of her. So mm -hmm. she's very pleased to be here mm -hmm. and she knows that it's done a lot for her and she probably wouldn't be where she is if uh, she wasn't in a high level training situation like this one. Mm -hmm. She is a very determined and very directed young girl and uh, uh, maybe some people would call it stubborn but at the same time she's really uh, she's really sticking to it. Where does she get that? Is that from you? <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, a lot of the other coaches always kid me about that. She, they say boy she's stubborn ornery cuss isn't she? I wonder where she got that. And um, yeah I think uh, she's got that ability to keep uh, to run through a brick wall if she needs to. <laughs> I've raised Marie as a single parent since she was seven. Well, Marie lost uh, all her hearing in her left ear and most of her hearing in her right ear when she was two and a half and had spinal meningitis, but her hearing has also contributed to the fact that she isn't able to interact very well in groups or social groups. This is one of the reasons it's very difficult right now and has been when she moved away to get the kind of training that she's receiving here. A perfectionist, Marie is an A student, despite living far from her Minneapolis roots. I miss seeing my dad a lot. I miss seeing my mom a lot, too. Um, I really love them a lot, and I think they, they really try and help as much as they can, even though I'm living away from them. Marie's had a variety of coaches. Uh, Marie has been trained in a non-feminine 
approach, I would say. So her principal problems are not technical gymnastics. Her principal problems are emoting well and dancing well. I think we have the whole spectrum of emotional makeups for each, each of the children that we have, from all the way from Marie, who is very driven and stubborn, to Amy, who's very affectionate and very loving. Uh, Marie is living away from home and has to contend with that, not having parents around. Uh, Amy has a very loving and supporting family. Amy is also an honor roll student, but gymnastics was her first love. Well, ever since I was like two, I was doing splits and trying cartwheels and all that kind of stuff. So my mom finally decided, you know, it was time to get me into a gymnastics class so I wouldn't kill myself. I've always um, considered dancing natural. And I never really had to work at it, I mean, to the extent of some gymnasts do. In 1980, Amy made our Olympic team. she just turned 13. If we had gone to Moscow, she would have been the youngest Olympian in our history. At Amy's Arlington Heights, Illinois home, I met her brother Rick, sisters Suzanne and Melissa, and talk to her parents, Rich and Judy Koopman. What's it like being the parents of Amy Koopman now that she's uh, reached a certain level of national and international acclaim? It's full of challenges, trying to find time to fit in all the different things we have to do, not only with Amy, but with the rest of the children. We just, you know, we want to be involved with all the children, not just Amy. We have younger children as well, well as an older child. Do you all have any concerns about uh, Amy's social interactions uh, with her peers? Uh, she's really not uh, just a normal girl anymore. She isn't able to keep up uh, a one-to-one -one friendship with high school friends right here in town like she'd like to. Maybe she won't have as many friends, but they could be more meaningful to her uh, because of associations and teamwork and camaraderie that's uh, been brought uh, to bear by being a member of national teams and so forth. There are certainly things that she can't do. She would have loved to have been in drama in high school and couldn't, you know, doesn't have the time for that. And cheerleading and the dance organizations that are at school because dance she loves so much. Here she gets to shine at a fundraiser for the gymnastics club. She loves to express herself. That's from within. She's a Leo, and I think that that has something to do with it. She's, you know, they like to be the center of attention and perform. Bill Sands feels that her ballet-like grace typifies Amy's approach to her sport. Amy takes a very different approach to gymnastics. Most of the girls in gymnastics take a very masculine approach. They want to dominate the event in a very masculine way. Amy is a real artist. It would, it would make Amy very angry if she won and did poorly. She is a better than adequate tumbler, but not a superb tumbler. And yet her dance work is head and shoulders above everybody else. There's no one that really even compares. I think Amy at the moment is one of the best dancers in the world, gymnastically, if not the best. of the United States Gymnastics International Invitational. Marie needs to conquer her stubbornness, so she's more open to correction without being emotional about it, without getting angry about it, and more open to making mistakes. Even so, she only missed making the last U.S. World Championship team by three-tenths of a point. Amy ties for first in the floor exercise, but Coach Sands thinks she can do even better. Amy is needs to conquer her own confidence i guess would be the best way of putting it is that i don't think that amy knows how good she is or really believes that she's as good as she is uh, she's always come within inches of her goal and something interferes and so she needs to conquer her ability to deal with a decisive moment Coaches tell me, you know, that I could possibly, you know, win a medal, like a safe floor, for example, if I hit. And really, I, there's nothing I can do except do my best. When it gets down to me, I really don't get nervous until I'm there. Then I get nervous.
strong-minded Marie Resselsberger and vivacious Amy Koopman. Two teenagers in search of the key to themselves and Olympic glory. The top ten is determined by how well they can deal with themselves. The great equalizer, the great ranking thing, the measurement of their ability is more themselves than it is their sport. On the road to Los Angeles right after this.